the earnest truth aspirants to visit their land. We now invite you to listen to an enlightening discussion by Supreme Master Ching Hai with our association members entitled The Reincarnations of Shakyamuni Buddha on May 16, 1996 in Cambodia. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try it alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Uh, do many of you read the story of a 1001 Arabian Nights? Yes? Some of you have, huh? Yes. You remember the witch in the stories? Whenever she wants to create something, she just uses some kind of powder, maybe bread, flour, you know, wheat flour, something. And then she just sprinkle it on the floor, like a river-like shape. And then she said, hula, hula, hula. And then it became a river. And then she wash her hand in there, huh? And then she used the water to uh, cook some concoction and to uh, make uh, trouble for people. <laughs> or to cast a spell upon a handsome prince or something, make him become a frog, or something more interesting like a mouse, yes. So uh, in this uh, magical land such as Cambodia retreat, huh, you didn't have to even sprinkle the flower, and then <laughs> the river just appeared like that. Did you see? Yes. And you have an ocean sitting in front of you, <laughs> the sea. The Supreme Sea, you know, and that even. One day, just before the golden snail died, you know, many of the snail disciples, the silver snail disciples, came around Her Majesty the Golden Snail deathbed, just to praise her, to say goodbye, and to pay the last respect. So many of the silver snail disciples, you know, made a lot of Ah, praise is just like, wow, we haven't never seen such a beautiful, glorious snail before, okay? And the other one say, right, right, right. And another one make a more glorious statement like, wow, we have never had such a wise snail in our life. And the other one say, yes, 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 yes. And another one would say, wow, such a compassionate snails we can never find in this world. And then the other also said, yes, 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 of course, only the supreme <laughs> golden snail could be so compassionate. And then the other said, wow, you know what? I think our supreme snail <laughs> is the only one that uh, can get uh, in touch with God in one lifetime and even give us the opportunity to do so. So everybody applaud and uh, yeah, clap hands and hurrah and everything. <laughs> And then the golden snail is supposed to be very agitated and feel kind of restless. So uh, <laughs> the assistant snail, which is the color between silver and golden, <laughs> and uh, have uh, two horns, you know, uh, a little bit shorter than the horns of the so-called golden <laughs> supreme <laughs> snail. Uh, she asked the golden snail with the two longer horns, say, Master, what is it that makes you feel so agitated? I feel that you are not very restful. Didn't you hear the praises of your disciples, the snails? <laughs> because she knows that the master's golden snail love to hear praises and applaud and clap in hand, thing like that. So uh, the master kept silent for a while, and then the snail kept pressing for the attendant, saying, Master, didn't you hear the praises of your disciple? They say you are compassionate, you are wise, you are intelligent, you are beautiful, you are glorious, you are God-realized, and you are the one and only in the whole world of snails. That's so great. <laughs> so the master snail saying, How? I have so much humility. They didn't even mention it once. <laughs> And that's the reason why the Master was so agitated, yeah. That's about it, humility. Hmm? All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, I have chosen something for you last night. Ah. One day the Supreme <laughs> Disciple of the Supreme Master Snail 
pastor God, you know, really persistently for masterhood. Huh? He keeps saying to God, Oh God, look here. You are almighty. And uh, there's nothing you could not do. Just give me a mastership, huh? master degree <laughs> in spirituality. Mm. I have practiced for long years already. I have been a vegetarian diet, you know, for so many years. And I have kept the five precepts. And I have always prayed, you know, I get up at half past four in the morning every day. I meditate until half past seven. And then at night, as soon as I come home, I eat, bath, and meditate immediately again. Uh, from uh, uh, nine uh, to uh, twelve. And then I go to bed, and then I get up again at half past four, and meditate, blah, 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 and I go to work, and then come back and meditate again, and blah, 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 and sleep, and the next morning get up and meditate again, again, again. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> yes, yes. God said, I'm already tired. <laughs> you, you, your diligence. Uh, anyhow, so God said, now what you want? Huh? Oh, but I'm sorry, all oh, this is not entitled you to be a master. Not yet. Oh, why don't you keep trying, you know? See, different way. And God wouldn't tell him because it's supposed to be a secret of the universe and you have to find out yourself. So anyhow, the guy was uh, exasperated. After pestering him for many weeks, and God doesn't move. Huh? He seems a very unreasonable God as that. So anyhow, one day uh, he keep uh, pressing God again to give him uh, at least a probation of masterhood. <laughs> Six months <laughs> uh, on probation, yeah, because uh, every time uh, on earth if you take any job, you have to have a probation, no? Uh, at least six months, three months, huh? And then both parties would understand uh, whether that person is suitable or not. But God said, oh, no, 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 I have something better for you. Why don't you just announce to the world that I have given you a masterhood, but you just refused. <laughs> that is more noble, huh? God is clever. He doesn't want to hurt the man, but then he gives him something even better. Uh, there was another master when she was born as a golden snail. <laughs> As she was sitting there with the disciples one day, together with the silver snails and copper snails, <laughs> metal, metal snails, aluminum <laughs> snails. There are various kinds of snails according to their inner development. Huh? They were talking uh, in the middle of lunch. She had them over for lunch. And suddenly, Oh, there was an earthquake, very, very, very strong. Nine point nine, you know. <laughs> so all the snails were running as fast as the snail could. <laughs> yeah, and they're up and down, in and out, you know. And they just bump onto the table and bump into the glass door and everything. It's all very chaotic. And the house of the snails was shaking like this and all that horns were kind of <laughs> twisting together. <laughs> and it was very chaotic, and the earthquake lasted about three minutes in these circumstances. And so after the earthquake was finished, everybody went back to their seats and, you know, ah, thanks God, that is over. And the Supreme Master Snail was uh, sitting there with uh, her horn up. <laughs> they don't have noses, mind you, the snail. They don't have noses, they just have horns. So she just stick her two horns up, very long horns. <laughs> long and fat horns. <laughs> stick them in the sky, quiet for a while, and until the disciple couldn't bear it no longer. <laughs> and asked the master, what is it? <laughs> because they know every time if the master stick her golden horns up like that. She's about to make a very grand statement or some big lecture or something like that. And how to become Buddha in one second, <laughs> a thing like that. So they were very, <laughs> very, very, you know, nervous and <laughs> expecting. But the master just keeps sticking the horns up 
and don't say anything. Now finally the half golden and half silver attendant, you know, said, please <laughs> be compassionate, O Master, and tell us what is the great things that you have in your mind now. Don't hesitate longer, for all sentient beings are thirsty for the tooth. Yes. So the Master slowly descended her horn <laughs> to, <laughs> to an ordinary level <laughs> of consciousness so that all the disciples can understand <laughs> because even her horn is too high. <laughs> I don't think the ordinary sentient snails could ever catch up. So now she lower her horn up to here <laughs> like this. And she say, Did you see I was very calm during the earthquake? <laughs> so, so all the snails say, Oh yes, Master, oh yes. And then the Master continue further. After a pause, so that people feel more appreciative. Did you see that I didn't run here and there like all of you fool? <laughs> And then all the disciples, of course, of course, and all their horns clapped together, you know, in unison to praise the Master. And now the Master snail say, Did you see that I calmly sat here, sipping tea while you were running here and there like that? And the disciples say, Yes, we saw you calmly sitting here drinking, but there was a soya sauce that you drink. <laughs> Not the tea. <laughs> Sorry, wrong cup. <laughs> Our master was so calm. <laughs> Could notice the difference. <laughs> you got it, huh? So this is called the master ego. There are disciples' ego and master's ego. <laughs> So when you uh, reach a masterhood, you probably reward it with a master ego, all right? There was an old man about 85 years old in a very robust health. And the newspapers and uh, television came uh, on his birthday to uh, interview him about the secret of long life. So he said, oh, no problem. I just walk about five miles a day every day. and then." I uh, do some bicycling and uh, swimming whenever I like. But walking is a basic routine in my life. I make myself a point to walk five miles a day, every morning. Hmm. But one of the journalists uh, was very skeptical, saying, My father, he walks also five miles every day, but he died at fifty. Ah. So the old say, now then, he didn't do it long enough, that's why. <laughs> Got it? Ah. Okay. <laughs> he should have done it until 85, then he lived long, right? <laughs> 